Yes. About casings. Now, most sausages are made from hog casings. Now, casings are, yes, they are intestines from the pig. Now, when you're into a smaller uh, sausage, such as breakfast sausage, you're using a sheep casing, sheep intestine. Now, other types of casings that you'll see, for instance, things like um, hot dogs. Hot dogs are made with a, a, a casing called a collagen casing, and it's an edible paper-like casing, but it's actually not made from paper, it's made from proteins. And those are the type that you can kind of peel off sometimes when you see on uh, knockwurst, bockwurst, and uh, uh, hot dogs. So that would be a collagen. So there's sheep, hog, and again, hog is the main one that people use. Now, anybody wants to buy these, they're not that readily available, but if you guys have butcher that you deal with, you can go in and have your butcher order you um, casings. They come by the hank. A hank is how you order them. That's a lot of casings. Like, you probably will never use that amount. But luckily, they're packed in salt, and you can leave them in your refrigerator or even freezer for an, uh, a long, long time. Now, what you do with them is that when you're ready to use them, you soak them in water for a couple of hours, and then just prior to using them, you actually pull out the lengths, and you, which sort of look like this, and you run these under water. So you open the end, and actually flush out the, the casing with, with cold water. And as you're going, you're just pulling the water through. So these have already all been done. But that, again, they're, they're packed in salt, so you really want to get rid of a lot of the salt that's in there. Um, so, again, I talked about grinders, and now I'm going to talk a little bit about stuffers. Again, if you're making sausages at home, you can use a KitchenAid. And you can get something similar to this horn right here that will fit on the end of this. And after you're done with this process, you can do the actual stuffing process on the KitchenAid. Now, the one problem about doing it on KitchenAid is that this has got a very small motor, so therefore it takes a long time for this meat to get through here. And while it's doing that, it's heating up. And again, the one thing that you do not want is for the mix to heat up, because then it starts to emulsify by heat, which is different than the process that's going on when we mix it, which is also emulsification, but it's emulsification by agitation. So as the meat is getting mixed and beaten around, it's becoming sort of bound and tacky, and it has that sort of elasticity to it. That's different, and it's not happening from heat. So again, you want to be able to come through here as quick as possible by just dropping little bits at a time and not overloading it. Now, other types of stuffers are, there's versions of this. This is obviously a very big version that we use at work. And, but you can buy these through butcher supply shops. Um, also, by the way, casings, if you go online and, and look up hog casings or sheep casings, there's tons of places that can nail them to you. Um, so this is another type of stuffer, a crank stuffer, where you would just pull this up. It's a piston, basically. The thing comes up, you pull it out, you put your mix in there, and then put your casings on the front, and you can stuff on here. You can also buy smaller versions of this at, um, again, butcher supplies. Um, they didn't have one at Sir Latab, which was surprising, but um, these are available. Now, when you go to bigger factories, such as SOGs or, or, or big places, you'll see things like what we're using here, what we use at work. And what this is, is a, um, is a, um, it's a water pressure piston. So when you go to bigger factories, basically you see the same type of unit as this, but instead of water, it's being run by air. So what this is, is that once the mix is done, you're putting it in here, closing it, and turning it over, and then using this, and then the piston comes up and pushes the filling out. So we're going to make a little mix here. So I have already my six pounds of sausage mix, and I'm not sure what the recipe is. I think it's three pounds, maybe? Yeah. So we're going to just dump everything in this mixer over here. mixing part is really important because it's easy to overmix and undermix. A sausage that's undermixed tends to crumble. You ever had a sausage where you cut it or open it up and it kind of is just falling out? It's, it's not really tight. A sausage, a good sausage should be not as tight as like a hot dog, which would be the extreme, but somewhere in between crumbling apart and a hot dog. So you want it to be sort of 
bound together and, and tight when you look at it. You want to be able to see the whole surface. You shouldn't see air and, and all of that. So that's sort of what's crucial about mixing. So again, what's happening is emulsification through the agitation of the meat, not through the heating process. So basically, and again, you can be doing this in the KitchenAid as well. Doing it by hand, you can get a pretty good mix, but you're really not going to get quite enough. But you could do it, and it, it might be a little bit grainy or more crumbly than, than normal. But um, starting on, let's say, uh, the easiest speed, which is one here, and then I'll bring it up a little. Take one of these casings. 